in the previous videos, we've been talking about having like one variable. So maybe that one variable was the number of slices of pepperoni on a piece of pizza or something like that. Um, in the real world, it's not unusual to see some paired data. So like before and after or something like that. So imagine we have something like a test of some kind and perhaps before getting trained or before some like class, then we observe these test scores. So maybe Alice got a score of 80, Bob got a score of 70, Carlos 75, Danielle 78, and all the way down to Xander who got a score of 72. So they took the test, get, got these scores, and then maybe they had some training, some kind of class or something like that, and then they retook the test and got these new scores. So 90, 91, 90, 98, 92. So if the class works, then we would see an increase. So in other words, if the class works, if it's, the class is effective, the scores after the class should be better than the scores before the class. So what we could do is calculate each person's increase. So like Alice before was 80, after is 90, so her increase is 10. Bob's increase was 21. Carlos's increase was 15. Danielle's increase was 20. Xander's increase was 20. So now we have this new variable, which is just the increase or the improvement in their test score. And we can focus just on this one variable and pretty much forget about these other two variables and do all of our inference on just this one variable there, the increase or the improvement in the test score. So we can do this subtraction here because we have paired data. Alice is paired with herself. Her before score is paired with her after score. Bob's before score is paired with his after score and so on. So all we're interested in is essentially the difference there. So we can just focus on that improvement or that increase. So now we could go ahead and do a hypothesis test using that just that variable there. So we could do something like, like if we wanted to see whether there is an improvement, the null hypothesis would be there's no improvement, meaning mu is equal to zero, meaning the mean increase is zero. And then if there is improvement, then mu is gonna be greater than zero. So we could go ahead and do that hypothesis test. Um, if we have n equals 26 people, then we could calculate x bar, and we could calculate the sample standard deviation. So then our test statistic would be x bar minus mu under the null divided by s over root n. But mu under the null is just zero, so this is x bar over s divided by root n. So we could go ahead, plug in those values, and we know that our test stat follows a t distribution with n minus one degrees of freedom. So since we had 26 students here, we have 25 degrees of freedom. So then our p-value would be two times the probability of, actually let's just take out the two. Our p-value is gonna be the probability of seeing an absolute value of a test statistic greater than or equal to our particular test statistic, x bar over s over root n. So again, since we have a, oh sorry. So since the alternative actually is mu is greater than zero, we're just going to look at the probability that our test statistic is greater than or equal to our particular test statistic. So here's our t-distribution with eight degrees of freedom. It's centered at zero. We would draw in our particular test statistic, x bar over s over root n, and then our p-value would be that area there. So we're just shading that upper area because our alternative hypothesis is mu is greater than zero. So we would look at the area above our particular our particular test statistic. So there would be our p-value. Okay, so we can see that if we want to do a hypothesis test and we have paired data, let's just use this new variable that we've created 
which is just the difference between those two variables. And similarly, if we wanted, we could create a confidence interval for the increase in test score. So it's just going to be our sample mean increase. plus or minus our special value of t times s over root n. So remember, we calculate this particular value, t star, using a t distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. And if we want to have a 1 minus alpha level of confidence, then that means that we have alpha over 2 in each tail. And so then we would look for this value t star such that we'll get alpha over 2 in each tail. So in other words, when we have paired data, go ahead and just find the difference. And that will be what you use to do a confidence interval or a hypothesis test. All right, so you do not want to just ignore the increase and ignore the pairing of the data. If we just um, kept this as before and after and then ignored that they were from the same person, we would be losing a lot of information. So we don't want to throw away the paired nature of the data because that loses information. It, it will lose um, power. It will lose exactness in the confidence interval. So we want to take into account the paired nature of the data by just looking at the difference between the columns. 